All right, guys, we are going to review systems of equations, linear, and systems. We're going to learn systems with quadratics and exponentials as well. So that's what we are going to be looking at today. Um, most of this is review. When you're done with the notes, you may work on your homework, and I will should be back too soon. All right. So we have two lines, y equals 3 fourths x plus 1, and y equals negative 1 half x minus 4. So it's important first that you understand that these are lines. These are not exponentials. These are not quadratics, which you guys have been used to graphing quadratics right now. I know these are linear because they are first degree um, equations, meaning x is to the first power for both of them. So make sure you are really separating which functions you are using so that you can... Um, graph them correctly. So again, these are to the first power, so that's why you know they are lines. Also, they look like y equals mx plus b. So remember that my b value is my y-intercept. So I start by plotting my y-intercept at 1. My m value is my slope. So this is a rise of 3 over a run of 4. So I will go up 3 and write 4 to make a positive slope because my slope is positive. If I were to graph this line, it would be connected and it would be going uphill. So I go up 3 over to the right 4. Please use a straight edge when connecting lines, although you guys will be doing this all on a computer for the EOC and we practiced that last week. So that is my first line. So this is telling me to solve by graphing. When I have two equations, that is a system. Two or more equations is a system. And when you're graphing a system, you are looking for where your lines or where your two functions are intersecting. And they can, for some functions, um, intersect more than once. So just be aware of that. But you're looking for the intersection. Remember that if it's the same line that it has um, infinitely many solutions because it's hitting multiple times, if they are parallel, they'll never hit. So that's no solution, and um, if they're going to cross once, it has one solution or two solutions, depending on the function. All right, so my y-intercept of the second equation here is negative 4. So I plot a point at negative 4, and my slope this time is down 1, right 2 to make a negative slope. So I go down 1, right 2 to make a negative slope. You'll notice that if these connect, this line is going downhill, which makes it a negative slope. So I'm going to keep extending this until it hits my other line that I already have graphed here because I am looking for where my two lines intersect. That is my solution. So you don't have your solution yet. But you need to write it out as an ordered pair. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's negative 4, negative 2. So they are crossing at negative 4, negative 2. That is my solution. So that's how we solved by graphing. We did this in January, so it's been a while since we have looked at this. But you guys also did it in middle school, so it should be really familiar to you guys now. All right, a review of solving by substitution. When you solve by substitution, you want to get one of the variables isolated. So you want to isolate one variable first. Well, that is already done with us with this y. So since y is the same thing as negative 3x plus 5, wherever we see a y, we can replace it with negative 3x plus 5. So we're going to replace that with the expression that is equal to y. So I do 5x minus 4 times negative 3x plus 5 equals negative 3. Don't forget that you need to take the sign in front. So this is actually a negative 4 that you're distributing through. A negative and a negative is a positive. A negative and a positive is a negative. 4 times 5 is 20. So now you'll notice, because we did this substitution, we no longer have two variables missing. And that's the reason why we're using substitution, is so that we don't have multiple variables missing in the problem. So we combine our like terms, and we solve for our variable. 
and we will get 17x equals 17, so x equals 1. But remember, like what we did here, we are looking for where it's intersecting on a graph. And a graph has is a two-dimensional space that has an x and a y, so we only have x. So we will then solve for the remaining variable. and then substitute back in to find the other variable. So we are going to take that and I'm going to substitute y equals negative 3x plus 5. I found out that x is 1, so I'm going to replace my x with 1. So I have y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 5, so y equals negative 3 plus 5, and y is 2. And you always write your answer as an ordered pair in alphabetical order. So that one has a solution of 1, 2. Okay. Last one we're going to review before we get into systems of quadratics in linear is our um, solving by elimination. What this is trying to do is eliminate a variable. So your first step is to make sure both equations are in ax plus by equals c form, which is standard form without all the rules that apply to standard form. Then you need to make a variable, um, same number, different signs, so that they cancel out or eliminate. So we already have it in that ax plus by form, but we don't have a same number, different signs here. We have different signs, but not the same number. So we need to figure out what to multiply this by so that things can cancel out. Well, I have a 1, which could be easily multiplied by 5 to get to 5. So I am just going to multiply everything on top by 5. I am not multiplying by negative 5 because this will become a negative. So I'll have a negative and a positive here, which will cancel out. So I have negative 5x plus 10y equals negative 40. And I'm going to add that to 5x minus 10y equals negative 3. So your next step will be to add your equations. So we are going to add those together. And you will notice actually in this one we get 0 plus 0 equals negative 43. So typically what will happen is that you'll only have one variable left in the problem. And you can continue to solve and substitute back in. But here we get 0 equals negative 43. So since this is not true, it is no solution. If it was a true statement like 0 equals 0, you would put infinitely many solutions. So after you add your equation, you'll solve for the remaining variable. and then substitute back in. That is your typical steps when it comes to um, solving by elimination. But in this case, we just got all of our variables to drop out. We got something that was not true, so it is no solution. If that had been negative 43 equals negative 43, you would have been able to say there's infinitely many solutions. All right, word problems. So write a system of equations for the given situation and then solve it using elimination or substitution. Typically we won't solve by graphing, like it's a little bit messy, so make sure you really understand substitution and elimination. In one hour, the theater department sold 150 tickets for the prediction, production of Old Town. Some of the tickets were for student admission and some were for non-students. The ticket price was $4 and the non-student price was $6. The total amount of money collected was 800. 
how many student and non tickets non student tickets sold so think about it this way if this is on your performance event day you need to make sure you're showing all your work you need to make sure you're defining variables you need to make sure you're doing everything or else you are going to lose points and that performance event is worth 10 points of your total 50 points which is a fifth of your whole grade you need to do well on the performance event so the first thing you need to do is define your variables and you have to be specific what is it about it's how many student and non-student tickets so I am going to call X the amount of student tickets and I'm going to call Y the amount of non-student tickets. So if this was a performance event, even if it doesn't have a box that says define your variables, define it in the first, wherever you're writing your equations. You must define your variables so the EOC knows what you are talking about. Please define your variables. After you do that, you can write your equation. We have a total of 150 tickets being sold. That means the total amount of student and total amount of non-student, which is our X and our Y. Add to 150. It then gives us a price. So since these, I should use a different color here, since these all deal with money, those things that I just outlined and boxed in pink, all deal with money, they need to go in the same equation. They are the same unit. So whatever it is, is going to equal $800. Well, it's $4 for a student ticket. And we said the student ticket is X. So we'll say 4X. It's $6 for a non-student ticket. And we said non-student tickets were Y. So we have plus 6Y. So now you can solve this with substitution or elimination. It does not matter. I personally would use elimination because it's already set up in the AX plus BY equals C form. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 4. Remember, in elimination, you want the same number, different sign. And that's what multiplying by negative 4 will do. It will help drop out my x terms there. So once you do that, you can add those together, and I get 2y equals 200, so my y value is 100. So your last step here before you write your sentence is just to take that and substitute it into one of the equations. So I replace y with 100, and I get x equals 50. Your answer needs to be written in the sentence for the EOC. So you will have to show all this work in that text box that we were playing around with and all of the steps that you're doing within your work so the EOC knows if it says to do it on the performance event, you have to do it. If it told you to graph it, you would also have to graph it. Do not skip anything. But we know that 50 student tickets and 100 non-student tickets were sold in one hour. All right, so that's how we would do a word problem. Now, to remember how to do inequalities, which remember on the EOC, after you graphed the line, you had to click on it and a paint bucket appeared to shade it. That's what this one is going to be doing, essentially. That's if you had to do this on the EOC, that's what you would have to look at there. So, you graph it the same way we did with the lines. You have your y-intercept at negative 2 and a slope of negative 1 over 1. So we'll use that. We know this is an inequality because of this the sign that looks like a sideways V. Remember, with inequalities, we have different situations that are happening here. We have our less than or equal to, our less than, our greater than or equal to, and our greater than signs. So we talked about how Okay, 
So we talked about how shading works. If it has the line underneath, if it has the line underneath, the line itself is going to be solid. So these ones have solid lines. This is also um, the same as when you do that single variable number line as the shaded in circle. If there is no line underneath, we use like a dashed line or an open circle. So that's what those ones did. Then if it's less than, we talk about how it, you need to shade below the line. Remember, below the line is less than because those numbers are less. If it's greater than, we shade above the line. If we're talking about a number line, if it was less than, you would shade to the left. If it's greater than, you would shade to the right because those numbers are bigger and smaller. All right, so let's go in and actually graph them. So we have a line underneath, which means it's a solid line. It's greater than, so we don't have to shade. We shade above, I mean. And because it's already solved for, we don't have to worry about flipping the sign if we multiply or divide by a negative. So I plot it. I go down one, right one to make that negative slope. And my line needs to be solid. And I'm going to be shading above this line. So if you look at this, remember my pen is going upwards if I go this way, downwards if I go this way. So since it looks like my pen, since it's going, I put it directly how my line is going, since it looks like it's going upwards this way, that is my greater than. And I don't really shade a bunch. I just do a few lines so I know where it's at. I'm going to do my other one in a different color to make it a little bit easier to see, which is which. So this doesn't have a line underneath. So we are going to be shading, doing a dashed line. You'll also notice that, again, we're not solving, so we don't have to worry about multiplying or dividing by a negative and flipping that inequality. So we have a y-intercept at negative 4 and a slope of 1 over 1. So I go to negative 4, and I go up 1 over 1. And this line is going to be dashed. And we said less than is below. So I put my pen the same direction as my line. If I go this way, it's upwards. If I go that way, it's downwards. So this is my below. And we shade really, really dark where they're overlapping. And that is my answer. So just remember, if you're asked if the point 1, negative 3 is a solution, it is not actually a solution, even though that's where they're intersecting. Because it's on a dashed line and a solid line, Dash line means not included. So that is not included in that purple line that I drew there. However, it is included on the pink line, and it must be included for both. So it's really important you understand that a solid line means included, and a dash line means not included. So anything in our shaded region or on a solid line is part of that um, solution set. So for us, it actually happens to be this part of the solid line is also less than, so it includes that. But it doesn't include the dash line. All right, let's get into some other stuff. We'll practice graphing exponentials and linear together, and then we'll solve it by substitution as well, and then you can work on your homework. Okay, so this is to solve by graphing. I know this first one is exponential because my highest exponent is 2. I know my second one is linear because I don't have an exponent at all. The highest exponent is 1. So making sure you can distinguish that so you can graph them is super important. So when I graph an exponential function, and this one happens to be in vertex form, I can see my h, k. My vertex is at opposite h, 2, same k, 5. And then I do my pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4, out 1, up 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. So out 1, up 1, out 2, up 4, out 3, up 9, and out 4, up 16. And we multiply by our a value, which happens to be 1 here, so it's not changing anything. So I'm going to graph that one first. I'm going to plot my point at 2, 5. Go out 1, up 1, out 2, up 4, and connect my points. And then to graph this one, 
it's a linear, so I have my y-intercept and my slope of 1. And remember, when we do a system, we're looking for where it intersects. When we did a line, it could only intersect once. But with an exponential, due to its shape being a u, it could intersect more than once, which this one happens to intersect more than once. So we have two solutions here. We have one at the vertex, which is 2, 5. And then we have one at 3, 6 as well. So that means that if we were to substitute those in for both equations, it would be true for both of those equations. So if I substitute 2 in here, that's 0, so that is 5. If I substitute 3 in here, that's 1 plus 5 is 6. So that's true. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. It's true for both. So we could have two solutions when we're talking about an exponential and a linear together. So just be careful that you're looking for every single time it crosses. Don't only just be looking for one like we did with the lines. So how are we going to do this with substitution? Well, with substitution, we replace if things are the same. So since they're both equal to y, I can replace y with x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals negative 2x. I know that this one is, um, hopefully I haven't been saying exponential. I meant quadratic. These are quadratic. Sorry if I'm saying exponential. Quadratic. Um, I know this is quadratic because my highest exponent is 2. So these are quadratic. because my highest exponent is 2. Um, I know it's linear because my highest exponent is 1. So it's really important that you guys can distinguish between those. Again, quadratic highest exponent is 2. No exponent or highest exponent is 1 is linear. So I know that I'm going to be solving this by substitution. If I graph this, I know it would be a parabola and a line. So I am going to substitute that in. I notice that my highest exponent is 2. It's not just a 1. So it doesn't make it easy to solve for, like when we did substitution here, where you could just solve for x the normal way. Remember, when our highest exponent is 2, we have to get it set equal to 0 first to solve. And then you could use something like factoring or the quadratic formula to help you out with solving. So I'll show you both ways just in case you are terrible with factoring and don't feel like factoring. Um, so if you're factoring, you list out the factors of the front, you list out the factors of the back. We need one of each sign because this is a negative. So if I have negative 1 and positive 4, that's a positive 3, not a negative 3. If I have negative 4 and positive 1, though, that will get me to a negative 3. So I need to do x minus 4 and x plus 1 equals 0, and then I make those mini equations. So I have x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. So I get x equals 4, and x equals negative 1. But you are not done. You're trying to see where they intersect, like on a graph, which means you still have to substitute those back in to get your y value. So you have to do this twice. So I'm going to plug it into the linear one, because that will be easier. So I get y is negative 8, so one of my solutions is 4, negative 8. And if I do y equals negative 2x, then I do negative 2 times negative 1, so y equals 2. So my other point of intersection is at negative 1, 2. So these are my solutions. It is intersecting twice. What if you have no clue how to factor still? Well, good thing we know the quadratic formula when we are doing a quadratic. So we use x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is actually a formula on your formula sheet you will be receiving next week when you start your EOC. So I am looking at this equation here. So my a is 1, my b is negative 3, and my c is negative 4. So I substitute that in. So I have x equals opposite of a negative 3 is a positive 3. 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 
times negative 4 all over 2 times 1. So I taught you guys to substitute only what's underneath the radical without the radical. So I do negative 4, 9 minus 4 times 1 times negative 4. And I get 25. So I have 3 plus the square root of 25 over 2 and 3 minus the square root of 25 over 2. So that's 8 over 2, which is 4. Negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So you'll notice we're still getting those same answers we got over here. So our last step is just to substitute that in. And I get 4, negative 8. And if I substitute in a negative 1, I get negative 1, 2. So either way, you will get the same answer. So if you struggle with factoring, you can always use the quadratic formula. Good luck on your homework.